On January 6, 2021, Trump supporters gathered for the Save America March to hear speeches by Donald Trump Jr., Rudy Giuliani, and the president himself. The topic of the day was Trump's continued insistence that fraud had marred the 2020 election result. Encouraged by Trump, rally-goers marched to the Capitol building, where a joint session of Congress, presided over by Vice President Mike Pence, had just begun to tally the Electoral College votes, a process that would inevitably end in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris being declared the winners of the 2020 presidential election. The mob of thousands of Trump supporters reached the Capitol around 2 p.m. and proceeded to breach multiple police perimeters before occupying, vandalizing, and ransacking the building. Politicians inside the building were evacuated. The violence led to countless injuries, the loss of at least five lives, and eventually over a hundred arrests. The storming of the U.S. Capitol has been described as treason, sedition, insurrection, and an attempted coup d'etat. While there is relatively widespread agreement that this was one of the darkest days in the history of American democracy, there remains some disagreement over the question of blame. So, who is responsible? A number of Republican pundits and lawmakers have suggested that agitators in the riot came from the left-wing political movement Antifa. Some made the claim without evidence. For example, speaking to Lou Dobbs on Fox Business, Representative Mo Brooks made the somewhat ironically phrased claim, there is some indication that fascist Antifa elements were involved, that they embedded themselves in the Trump protests. In a since-deleted tweet, California Senate GOP leader Shannon Grove wrote, Patriots don't act like this, this was Antifa. Representative Paul Gosser of Arizona wrote on Twitter, this has all the hallmarks of Antifa provocation. While numerous Republicans making the Antifa allegations offered no evidence to support their claims, others cited flimsy evidence, like Laura Ingram, who said on Fox News that the rioters were likely not all Trump supporters. She cited as evidence unspecified reports and her own assertion that the insurrectionists' wardrobe choices were suspicious. There was also conservative author Bridget Gabriel, who suggested via tweet, the man in yellow has a communist hammer and sickle tattoo on his hand. Those are not Trump supporters. Under closer inspection, the tattoo appears to be the outsider's mark from the video game Dishonored. By the by, the man standing next to him has two wall tattoos. He's also an active member of the QAnon conspiracy community and a Trump supporter. But don't take my word for it, take his. Attorney Lynn Wood, in a since-deleted tweet, claimed a picture of this man, Jake Angeli, to be indisputable photographic evidence that Antifa violently broke into Congress. And Jelly corrected these claims, tweeting at Wood, Mr. Wood, I am not Antifa or BLM. I am a QAnon and digital soldier. My name is Jake, and I marched with the police and fought against BLM and Antifa in Phoenix. Florida Congressman Matt Gates claimed that, if reporting is correct, some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and in fact were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. He cited as evidence a widely contested article by the Washington Times. The Washington Times has since corrected that story. In fact, the facial recognition software company that was reported to have identified Antifa members among the rioters did no such thing. The New York Post cited an unidentified law enforcement source to claim that two Antifa members were spotted amongst the throngs of pro-Trump supporters. At least two known Antifa members were spotted amongst the throngs of pro-Trump protesters at the Capitol on Wednesday, a law enforcement source told The Post. Even while retracting its false claims about facial recognition software identifications, the Washington Times has gone on to quote an anonymous law enforcement source who said somewhat cryptically, if the feds are really intent on making the linkage between the instigators and Antifa, the evidence is there. Meanwhile, the feds do not appear to be intent on making such a connection. According to reporting by Reuters, the FBI said there is no indication at this time that Antifa played a role in the mob that stormed the Capitol. The Washington Post summarized the false flag claims this way. There is no verifiable evidence that these activists, who broadly identify as anti-fascist, formed part of the insurrectionist mob that abruptly halted Congress in the midst of certifying president-elect 
Joe Biden's electoral victory. Here's my opinion on it. I personally cannot imagine a reason why the FBI, the DC police, or other law enforcement agencies would be reluctant to publicly state a link between Antifa and the riot if such a link could be established. It is not so difficult to imagine, however, that longtime Trump supporters would want to distance themselves and the movement they've supported from a disturbing, destructive, and embarrassing spectacle. Nor is it difficult to understand why Antifa would be a convenient scapegoat for right-wing politicians and pundits. The idea that Antifa was involved appears to be a transparent distraction. As detailed in the New York Times, BuzzFeed, and elsewhere, Trump supporters had been planning the storming of the Capitol for weeks prior to the events of January 6th. BuzzFeed reported the following. The supporters of President Donald Trump, who rioted in the U.S. Capitol building on Wednesday, had been openly planning for weeks on both mainstream social media and pro-Trump internet. On forums like The Donald, a niche website formed after Reddit banned the subreddit of the same name, they promised violence against lawmakers, police, and journalists if Congress did not reject the results of the 2020 election. In one interaction four days ago, a person on The Donald asked, what if Congress ignores the evidence? Storm the Capitol, said one reply, which received more than 500 upvotes. You're effing right we do. On pro-Trump social media website Parler, chat app Telegram, and other corners of the far-right internet, people discussed the Capitol Hill rally at which Trump spoke as the catalyst for a violent insurrection. They have been using those forums to plan an uprising in plain sight, one that they executed Wednesday afternoon, forcing Congress to flee its chambers as it met to certify the results of the election. New York Times reporting came to similar conclusions. Just after 1 p.m. when President Trump ended his speech to protesters in Washington by calling for them to march on Congress, hundreds of echoing calls to storm the building were made by his supporters online. On social media sites used by the far right, such as Gab and Parler, directions on which streets to take to avoid police and which tools to bring to help pry open doors were exchanged in comments. At least a dozen people posted about carrying guns into the halls of Congress. Calls for violence against members of Congress and for pro-Trump movements to retake the Capitol building have been circulating online for months. Bolstered by Mr. Trump, who has courted fringe movements like QAnon and the Proud Boys, groups have openly organized on social media networks and recruited others to their cause. On Wednesday, their online activism became real-world violence, leading to unprecedented scenes of mobs freely strolling through the halls of Congress and uploading celebratory photographs of themselves, encouraging others to join them. It's quite clear that this insurrection was not just carried out by Trump supporters, it was also planned by them well in advance. Given the significant advanced warning that a threat was looming, law enforcement is almost certainly at least partly to blame for the chaos inside the Capitol. Plenty have pointed their finger at police bias, as the explanation for why Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies were so woefully underprepared. It's not difficult to point to racial bias as a reason the police may have been friendlier to a Trump crowd than, say, protesters for Black Lives Matter. But political bias is also probably part of the problem. Police officers are overwhelmingly conservative, and Republican politicians overwhelmingly tend to identify as being pro-law enforcement, pro-law and order. This can help to explain why Capitol Police officers were in some instances overly friendly with the rioters. One officer took a selfie with someone who was part of the mob, while another wore a MAGA hat. Both have been suspended, and at least 10 others are under investigation for inappropriate behavior during the assault on the Capitol. It also explains why bigger poor decisions were made. Why Capitol Police rejected assistance from the National Guard and FBI in the days and hours leading up to the attack. And yet some have put forward a different narrative. According to the Daily Mail, the soft response by Capitol Police was an overcompensation for recent mistakes. Still stinging from the uproar over the violent response by law enforcement to protests last June near the White House when Trump ordered police, reinforced by guardsmen, 
to clear a path for a photo op by a church, Capitol Police officials were also intent on avoiding any appearance that the federal government was deploying active duty or National Guard troops against Americans. At any rate, the U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund resigned amid criticism over lack of preparedness effective January 16th, 2021. In an interview with Good Morning America, D.C.'s Attorney General suggested that Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump Jr., and even the president himself may be investigated for their possible roles in inciting the violence. I think the question is, how far up does it go? Clearly, the Capitol was ground central in all of this mob's behavior. Donald Trump Jr., Giuliani, even the president of the United States were calling on their supporters and hate groups to go to the Capitol and in the words of Rudy Giuliani, exercise combat justice. Indeed, Giuliani did call for trial by combat. And leading up to the event, Don Jr. had called for total war over the election. President Trump directed supporters to march to the Capitol. He suggested he would march with them, though he never did. And while he did not appear to direct the crowd to engage in violence or invade the building, he did repeatedly reinforce his unsubstantiated claims that the election was stolen from him, even telling the crowd, you will never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. You have to be strong. While the storming of the Capitol forced a delay in the congressional counting of the electoral vote, the process continued to completion after rioters were cleared from the building. If the goal of the insurrection was to undermine the election results, some Republican lawmakers in both houses seemed to serve the same purpose, even after the rioting was over. 121 House Republicans supported the objection to Arizona's certified election results, thus supporting Trump's baseless allegations of election fraud. Six senators sustained the Arizona objection. Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, Tommy Tuberville, Roger Marshall, John Kennedy, and Cindy Hyde-Smith. 138 House members, also all Republicans, also disputed the election results of Pennsylvania. Seven senators joined them. Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, Tommy Tuberville, Roger Marshall, Cindy Hyde-Smith, Cynthia Loomis, and Rick Scott. There were also House member objections to Georgia, Michigan, and Nevada, though these were not backed up in the Senate. All of these objections, of course, failed in the election victory of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris was certified. And now a little more of my opinion, if you'll indulge me. The longest running democratic system in the world was challenged, dishonored, and embarrassed by the events of January 6th, 2021. But the Republic survived the day. This was no thanks to the opponents of democracy in the Capitol building. Neither the uninvited rioter thugs, nor the duly elected scoundrels who oppose the acceptance of certified election results. It is easy to denounce the violence and chaos, but I believe also deserving of denunciation are the politicians in Congress who owe their great power and privilege to the support of American citizens and a system of government that can only survive when there is faith in elections and fidelity to their results. In the aftermath of the Capitol riot, it appears quite clear that Republican lawmakers are, more than ever, faced with a critical decision about the future of their party and their own political careers. Some will choose to remain loyal to Trump and Trumpism, beholden to the soon-to-be ex-president's whims in order to benefit from his fiercely loyal base of support. Others will go their own way, braving the condemnation of MAGA in order to distance themselves from the last four years, from the chaos of the events of January 6th, and perhaps in attempts to brand themselves as a kind of answer to this question. When my friends go, it was simple. When the ends low, switch the tempo. I got right, I got heart, I won't die, I'ma fight. I go down, bet I strike, I go hard day and night, yeah. I go hard day and night when the wine no surprise